and mercy and blessings of Allah may be with you. I am so happy to be here and I miss Cotabata so much. I just arrived here in Man from Manila yesterday. So it is an honor to be with you all today and all of you are the prime of this university and the organization that you are carrying. Only the very best people in any field will take time and make the sacrifice to go here so far for an event like this. If you may, um, please close your eyes and imagine. Imagine, one day, your friend asks you to accompany him in delivering a package um, in his neighbor. And then you said, yes. You rode on his cycle, carrying the package, and then drive is so smooth, but suddenly, a car in front of you just crashed. Thank God, thank God, thank God. You didn't get into that accident. But, what will you do during that time? Take a photo, call an ambulance, report it to a police station, or just panic and leave. Okay, now, open your eyes. Open your eyes. In today's age, this is what they do. Someone took a video and then some of the netizens would say you have to report it or you have to call it the you have to call an ambulance, report it to the police station, call the barangay and anything else. But there's no right and wrong of taking a video because some of the acts may help to find the truth. The video gave a lead of what really happened. And until now, it is under investigation. But with the help of that cell phone footage, it creates an online clamor. A trend that spikes emotion and speculation to millions of netizens. And finding the truth will make them at ease. Today, I'm going to share you some things that I learned from my civic engagements and community initiatives, but more importantly, on mobile journalism in the mainstream media. Mobile journalism is new in the Philippine industry. It is an emerging form of new media storytelling that uses this one that uses your own mobile phone. We are called Mojo or mobile journalists. Also known as survey journalism, selfie. This is a combination of blogging and news reporting. What makes it different from usual blogging and news reporting? Selfie journalism has content and depth. Not pure narcissism or muscle reflex. We talk about social issues. We talk about trends, science, and other interesting topics to learn and feel. This is not the, con this is not the conventional news reporting that has cameraman, that has crew, um, a researcher, that makes the interviewee intimidated and off-guarded because of those intents of life. 
line of questioning and intricate equipment in front of them. So close that all the force could be seen. So, Stand for Truth. Stand for Truth is a digital newscast that is pioneer in the Philippine media. True to our vision, the future of online newscast. Hosted by Ato Marolio, Richard Haydarian, and Joyce Spree. From the hundreds of uh, reporters, aspiring reporters all over the country, only 10 was selected. And yours truly, Alhamdulillah, is one of them. The best part is, we are all millennials. And through some, and some of our young at heart. And it makes more interesting and appealing. in the program that we use that fits in everyday life. There are my co-reporters from the, all over the country, from Luzon to Mindanao. So we use us, uh, we used our mobile phones. So now I'm sharing your jar, I'm sharing you now a jargon we use in the program that um, that fits in our everyday life. Remember, it is a jungle out there. There's a lot of treats or tricks. You need to adapt in the environment and take charge of all the circumstances that may surprise you. So, take note to all the future journalists and professionals. First is call time. Make time for what really matters. You can actually do a lot of things if you work on your schedule. You need to plan beforehand your interview, your location, your travel duration, possible encounters, and unending traffic. God, Edsa, pamatay, pasensya. Second word, deployment. No choosing of news assignment. What is given, do it. Find your angle and make sure it's not conventional. This kind of direction teaches us versatility and resourcefulness. It challenges our creative and critical mind because news producers don't just use the plain five W's and one H, the what, where, when, how, why. We should make it interesting to our viewers because we are now in an information age. Our attention is just like a goldfish. So in three seconds, we have to capture your attention. So I'm sharing you some of my experience when I went to Abra. This is a mini documentary um, about teachers and students who cross rivers every day to get into school. It is a three hour travel where we battled inclement weather while tra traversing the river. They used their salvavida, a floating object to cross the river. I almost drowned and got sick. Then and there, I realized that the problem in our country, in our homeland, is not isolated to Sharif Saidona, Pagalungan, and other adjacent river municipalities. It's all over the country. It is happening everywhere. And the government, where we put our trust fund, should put an extra effort to prioritize and uplift the condition of its people. I asked the LGU, and they said, they give life jackets. Is that the solution? Next word, next word, rest mats. Do your research. Don't go to the battle empty-handed unless you're ready to die. RESMAT stands for Resource Materials. These are the data, result of the research, tourist spot description, timeline of events, expert opinion, and netizens clamor. Sabi nga nila, iba na may alam. So what you learn on the 
field enhance your version of what you presently know. It enhances your news. It gives you a pressure angle of what you want to do or what you would like the viewers want to see. It gives us a, a critical thinking. Importantly, investigate the root cause of the problem. Like this one. Next word, line up and preview. This is the ranking of who did well. This time, reporters will know who's the banner, who's the banner story for today's program, according to content and visual presentation. So this, are, this is the place where we do the editing. Um, doing the script, do the voiceover, and uh, story conferencing of what would be the next story for today and for tomorrow. Competition it may look, but it is reinforcing because it recognizes your effort as a reporter and you'll learn where to where you improve next time you'll hear direct to the point comments like you didn't write well lack of visuals you don't look good in the camera <laughs> cry babies are not allowed in the editing bay so you have to you have to have a strong heart and be strong if your story is chosen as take one, meaning you did a great job, you are good in visuals and you're good in storytelling. Your new segment will be the banner and be seen first before the audience change their channel. Ratings in the media industry is very, very important. There is money in numbers. So you get good number, meaning you have a good content. And lesson, always do your best. Because like, if you want to be seen on TV, of course, you have to do your best and show what is the public needs, wants to see. Now, um, next would be the curing or cure. Before publishing to any media platform, as uh, in our program, we have uh, three platforms. GMA News TV, um, GMA Public Affairs YouTube channel, and GMA News Facebook page. This part of the production, the curing part, ensures that the program is flawless, truth, balanced, and factual because no one would like to receive a subpoena. Okay? <laughs> That's uh, dangerous and uh, scary. Also, it will make and break the opinion of the public. Minor mistake could boomerang and hit the greater impact in our integrity as a mobile journalist and to our mother company. We adhere to our core value. Walang kinikilingan, walang pinoproteksyonan, servisyong totoo lang. Finally, we get to the last term where the puso personalities and employees really love to hear. Ano yun? Pack up na. Pack up is used when everything is done. You completed the task, and you shoot all the elements of your story with satisfaction in your heart. This is the time to rest and be with your family, friends, and loved ones. Pack up na. Yes, pack up na. So this is our daily grind. Every day, I feel that anxiety and excitement in me, from scratch to well-produced news segment. Super intense. Every day, we have to serve something new and interesting to the public. This is not really an easy job, but you see the series of output we made. We just celebrated our 100th episode and it's our fifth month on air. Everything is new to me. I never thought it would happen, but earnestly, I work for it. I gave my best and I know deep inside me, I deserve this. This too should be your mantra. Believe in yourself. Believe in your stress. Believe that you can do everything that you wish for. Believe that God will always be at your side. I am happy that a Muslim like me who wears a hijab is given the chance to be seen in the mainstream media, representing our community. It neutralizes the stigma about us and able to showcase 
the unique stories that we have. It is my honor to serve my Uma and our family. I wish you find your strengths and contribute a positive, positive change in our country and in your community that surrounds you. This is a responsibility to all of us. This is a calling. We should not only be here to earn, to study, and play. We have to use that skill and knowledge that we learn from, from this university and to our society to better our world, our community, and the mindset of our co-generation. This is the time to stand for truth. Thank you very much, Kautabato, just a Kalakeran, I am Manasa Gadol, and I stand for truth. Thank you.